had a couple of weeks ago had an interesting conversation about what was going on at Zoom. They they launched some generative capabilities. They talked about how they might use some data to improve their product, and people went off the off the rail. Uh, I think you and I um, finally communicated to the world that this was one of the biggest nothing burgers in a long time. I ate twelve or thirteen nothing burgers, and then I I went back and got back to work. But Zoom, you know, has been one of these weird. Um, stories because in the pandemic period of time, this stock ran, I'm talking about like the NVIDIA run, this stock ran to $500 um, at its peak or somewhere right around 500. Yeah. It's trading now at like 60 to 70. So it literally went up like 10X and then went all the way back down. Um, and, you know, the question mark has been, does the company have the scale in a non- pandemic world where people actually do go to work and in remote uh, ecosystems to grow the business. I think what's come out of it is a healthy, consistently growing, steady business, Pat, that will very likely never see its valuation return to what it what it achieved during the pandemic. But it is still growing. And so the fact is, is this is one of those really interesting things is it's bigger than it was at the peak of the pandemic. So meaning this idea yeah. that remote work was what drove all the Zoom, but Zoom continues to grow. It's yeah. bigger than it was at the peak of the pandemic. They beat this quarter on top. They beat this quarter on bottom. Their growth is, it's steady. It's not massive, but they did, you know, their income looks good. They, you know, but what I liked the most about their, their numbers, Pat, was they're consistent growing enterprise, even if it's a small number, they're consistently growing their large customers, which is important. A lot of people kind of with the on with the advent of teams have kind of said, oh, Zoom's is the small business people. Zoom does the, the mid, Zoom gets the leftover. Yeah. Everything else goes to teams, but they're winning big enterprises. Um, and so, you know, they're, they're doing almost four and a half billion dollars a year in revenue and they're, they're winning large customers Here's the thing, though, and, and I'll, I'll keep this kind of short on this one, Pat, that we all have to keep an eye on, though. Can Zoom become a platform? Does anybody care about Zoom beyond Zoom calling and Zoom videos? And that's the, that's the big challenge that the company really has to overcome, is the market needs to believe that Zoom is an ecosystem for meeting, collaboration, integration, you know, right now to do the team's thing, Zoom needs uh, productivity. Zoom needs, uh, a, you know, some sort of developer platform, like a power platform. Zoom needs Dynamics or ERP. And the truth is Zoom's never going to build all those things. So is there a market for best of class? Is there a market for a company that's going to say, look, we'll use infrastructure from one company, we'll use Salesforce for the other thing, we'll use Google for productivity, and we'll use Zoom for collaboration. Is there enough there, Pat? Or does Zoom ambitiously try to enter into those spaces? We've seen what Salesforce has done there. Hasn't worked out particularly well for the company. Salesforce has a great ecosystem, so I want to be very clear what I'm saying. But even with Slack and Salesforce, it's still been hard found a hard you know run for them to fully find a way to sell people on that ecosystem. Zoom tried to, or Salesforce tried to do it with Quip. Um, Quip has really, I think, been a buried product. I don't think they're even really trying to focus on it. For Zoom, it's gonna be even harder. So I think they really need to think partnership, they need to think ecosystem, they need to think best of class, and they need to really lean into making their world-class user experience stay meaningfully better than the competition, which will be hard. I'm really impressed with senior management. If, if if you think about what they had to go through the last five years, I mean, I don't know how a team like that even does this. You know, I've been on roller coaster rides before. I saw my stock go from 90 to a buck 50, a buck 45 to 45 to six. I mean, it's just, it is, it, it is torrential, right? You're bringing on a ton of resources. You're laying off people. Uh, you're dealing with, you know, just so much stuff. And you you look at what Zoom did during, I'm not going to say the full word, the, the, during the P. Um, by the way, we'll, we'll get deranked and we'll have a <laughs> some link at the bottom of our video. It drives me crazy. But um, it's impressive, right? And then, you know, during 
the beginning of, of the P, there was the security scare, right? Uh, and Zoom made a, a ton of mistakes on the way it, it communicated and how it dealt uh, with it. Now, when you're on monster growth, you're more prone to make mistakes, right? And then you look where you are, look, look where they are now. They're putting up uh, some double digit uh, double digit numbers when their closest competitor is going in there, going in reverse, right? That, you know, hasn't had a increase in, I think six quarters. So, and then you map that against, uh, let's say Microsoft where they're essentially giving, uh, teams away for free, uh, with the big enterprise licenses, right? They're, they're bundling that in, you know, David Sachs on the All In podcast loves to talk about, right, like where are the regulators when it comes to bundling all this stuff by these giant companies? And, right, let's go to the other challenge. Zoom's core value proposition is its simplicity, right? If you remember three years ago, why do you like Zoom? Why do you use Zoom? Oh, it's just simple. It just works, right? Uh, compared to everything else, when you start adding, uh, features to it, the risk you run as a product leader is that it gets uh, more difficult. I do like the the pace that it is adding these features. They could add these capabilities and put them in our face, but I think it could backfire. Right? You have to slowly pull these folks in who brought you to the show, who who bought you for simplicity. I do think generative AI is an opportunity for them. If you look at all of the uh, value that you can get from a meeting where it's essentially your note taker, it's your action item uh, provider, it's your big moments, it determines what decisions were made. This is gonna be gigantic. And I think that people are just underestimating the value uh, of that. And yes, the generative AI nothing burger came and went just like you and i said it was essentially red meat for the press who needed something to uh write about uh the funny part is a lot of other companies changed their talks and it didn't get nearly the headlines uh as as uh as, as it was like someone discovered this Pat, and decided that this was the one time they were going to give a crap about the talk was updated in march and everything came out six months later. I mean, it's like, now go read the rest of them. Go read all the rest of the terms of services. Let's just make that a, a beat for somebody. Yeah, everybody's quietly changing their talks, right? Uh, I guess toss, terms of service, terms and conditions. But uh, no, no, it's good. So I, I like the way that you you characterize the company as as consistent, moving forward, I'll end with, I really like the double digit growth with the large customers because that's where it's at, right? And think about how hard that is, right? When you're probably a Microsoft shop and Microsoft's giving giving teams away for you to go in uh, and do that. So um, I, I didn't go uh, to the analyst uh, event uh, that you did because I had a prior commitment, but I did talk to the company's chief operating officer and the chief product officer uh, to try to try to figure out what was going on with the uh, uh, the terms of service.